had another interesting question that I want to talk about. Um, what's more important, testing your ketones or glucose? Very good question. Um, so let's first take a look at glucose. When you test your glucose, realize this, the lower the blood glucose, the higher amount of ketones that your body is going to run on, okay? The higher the glucose, the lower amount of ketones that your body can produce. So really what controls ketones and the amount of ketones is this glucose level. So if you just had glucose as one way to monitor this and everything was low, then you're pretty much gonna be in ketosis, okay? Now, when you start out, you might have a blood sugar of 80, okay? Um, some people have higher, some people have lower, but as you do ketosis, you're gonna find that it goes lower and lower, okay? So you might think that, oh my gosh, am I developing hypoglycemia? No, um, especially if you're feeling great. Now, if you have low blood sugars and you feel kind of funky and your blood sugars are low, then probably you have that condition. But there's a really good video that I put a link down below uh, on that topic, just if you have a question, because I think that's a real important one. But yeah, you can have normal um, blood sugars at 60 and feel great because you're doing ketones and your body is running on ketones, not glucose anymore, so there's not that huge need to run on glucose. But here's the problem. There's something called the dawn phenomena, and that happens uh, for a couple reasons. Usually, it's because you're a pre-diabetic or you have insulin resistance, which is very common. And as you go on keto and you lower the carb, and you do intermittent fasting, you're lowering your carbohydrates, you're lowering your glucose, you are actually gonna decrease your insulin levels, right? Well, because you have insulin resistance, your insulin is already dysfunctional, okay? And it takes a bit of time to correct this. So if you lower your insulin and you already have insulin dysfunction, which means it's just not, it's not working anymore, it's not pushing the blood sugars down, guess what? The sugar might come up for that reason alone. And this is why over time, this gets healed, okay? So that's one reason. The next reason is cortisol. That's a hormone by the adrenal and it runs in a wave. And the highest spike of that is at eight o'clock in the morning. So right around eight, it could be like seven, it could be nine in the morning, you might have a spike in cortisol. And cortisol has a tendency to release glucose, which then can spike, spike the glucose, which then will come down but if you have high levels of cortisol from stress, that could be why. Now, there's a thing called gluconeo, that means new, genesis. So it's the body's ability to make new glucose. Um, your body, even if you don't eat any carbs, can easily make glucose out of ketones, out of fat, and out of protein. So that's really what happens when you have this higher blood sugar in the morning if you have it. It's like, it wasn't something that you ate yesterday necessarily, it may have been, but if you had no carbs, it's because your body's making it out of other things. It's not a problem. Uh, it will go away over time, but these are the explanations of it. So let me just shift to ketones. So when you actually check your ketones, you can check them in the blood, through your breath, through the urine. I always recommend starting out uh, checking your urine ketones simply because it's less expensive and it's a good thing to start out with. But as you start doing ketosis and your body's more efficient and it's using up the ketones, you're not wasting them in the urine or the breath anymore, then it won't show up anymore in the urine or the breath. It will show up in the blood though. So these are good in the beginning, but blood is the best one long term. So realize that um, ketones provide like 30 to 38% of the fuel in the body. 50 to 60% of the fuel is gonna be from fatty acids that you're not gonna test um, through your testing methods through here. So even though sometimes your ketones are low, it doesn't mean you're not burning fat, okay? It's just you're not able to test it. And if your body needs glucose, which it does need a small amount for different parts of the brain, the eye and the, blood, the red blood cell, it can very easily make what it needs. And the reason I'm bringing that up is that if you have the dawn phenomena and this sugar is a little higher, that could actually lower the ketones, but it's not from carbs that you're eating. It's, it's actually called endogenous. Your body is making them from other things. So 
I wouldn't necessarily worry if you're doing keto and intermittent fasting and your ketones show low. It's because of this reason right here and you have insulin resistance. So my long-winded answer is that I think if we compare these, glucose is a little more important to test um, than ketones. Um, but I would like to recommend testing them both just to kind of understand what's happening and the significance of each one. But this will give you a good picture. Um, but if it goes high and you're not eating carbohydrates, realize you're getting this stuff right here. One last point. Let's say, for example, you're trying to do, I don't know, ketosis, intermittent fasting because you have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or some problem with the brain or your heart. Okay, uh, It's important to know how high these ketones are going. And you might want to take ketones, in which case, like, like MCT oil, your ketones are going to be very, very high. So by taking more ketones, obviously, when you test it, it's going to be off, off the charts. It's going to be a lot. So uh, you're not going to be able to evaluate if your body's making those ketones or it's coming from MCT oil. The only point I'm making with that is you want to differentiate the two. And if you have a brain problem or a heart problem, um, diet-wise, you want to get your carbs as low as possible, maybe even close to zero, and also do fasting as long as you can to really max out the benefits of ketones. All right. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.